All right, well, I guess we got to talk about this one a little bit, even though it doesn't directly involve the Seahawks. It's close enough. And a lot of people are going to ask about it. It was obviously the hot topic in the uh, Hawks Nest stream last night. I mean, it's a division rival, right? Like, we care what they're up to, even if it's not directly correlated to what we're doing, especially right now. This is still compelling. It's still interesting. And for my part, it is shocking. So, last night, we got this announcement from multiple sources. Schefter, Rappaport, um, all the usual suspects. The 49ers finalized a trade in which they acquired from the Panthers Christian McCaffrey. So, after a lot of discussion that he was going to be on the move, he is indeed on the move. Going over to San Francisco, they had a little bit of a need at running back. They had a little bit of a need with offensive skill players just in general because the offense is not playing particularly well right now. Um, kind of a weird situation where they just... They, they consistently were getting quality production out of these very low-level, no-name running backs. Every time they tried to add like a high-profile running back or uh, actually spend capital on one, it didn't work. And... It, it kept being a situation where they would use a guy for like half a season or three quarters of a season and then they'd be done. They'd go get another one. They'd use him for a little while. Then they'd be done. So they just uh, decided, you know what? Let's cut the knot. Let's go get a proven star. The best pass catching back in the league. A really good runner just in general as well. Not just a pass catcher. Somebody who's been very productive in this league. Okay. But... Given Christian McCaffrey's injury history, given his contract, I thought the Panthers were going to have to give him away. So, uh, buckle up for this one. The 49ers only had to give up a second round pick, third round pick, and fourth round pick in this upcoming draft. Plus, a fifth rounder in 2024. Now, the fifth rounder in 2024 is basically dirt. I understand that, but... I thought McCaffrey was going to be worth like a fourth round pick total just because he's damaged goods. He's struggled to stay healthy. He's missed a ton of games. He, I know he's not old yet, but with that contract, I thought you were just looking to offload him just because you're blowing it up and there's no reason to have him around. So right off the bump here, I think this is a disaster for the 49ers and it really puts them in a situation where they have to win the Super Bowl this year or else, what was it for? Because next year, McCaffrey's salary kicks in, he's going to be making 12 mil plus, and then it really could get ugly. So you need Christian McCaffrey to stay healthy for the remainder of this season, um, 11 games plus whatever playoffs come after that. You need him to be productive, like very productive, and you need that production to result in, I'd say, at least winning the conference and playing in the Super Bowl, at least. Or else, what a disaster, because now the only real draft capital the 49ers have left are the third-round picks they have from all their coaches getting poached by other teams. Um, that was uh, McDaniel, and there were a couple other guys as well. They're going to get more because um, uh, D'Amico Ryans is going to get hired probably this offseason. But... They've basically got nothing going on in the draft now. And look, McCaffrey, like I said, he's only 26, I believe. Yeah, he's 26 and a half approximately. And he's having a good year so far, right? Like in six games, he's produced pretty well. He's produced over 100 yards a game. He's gotten in the end zone a few times. He's obviously had some great years in this league, but um, the last two years, he's played in a combined 10 games, the year before this one. So... Out of 33 possible games he's played in 10, cannot stay healthy. And the year, it's been a while since he's been at that elite level where he was producing close to 2,000. Or in, in one year, he had almost 2,400 yards. That ain't happening anymore. It ain't happened in a while. <laughs> and if you include the playoffs, he's on the doorstep already of 1,300 career touches. 1,300 career touches. Once you get up to about that point, it starts to be a problem. It starts to be a thing where you as a player start to lose something most of the time as a running back. You just have taken too much punishment. You're not going to be the same guy. The Panthers really cooked him in those first three years with how much they utilized him. 
2019, he had over 400 touches. And since then, he's been... I mean, we used to talk about the 400-touch curse. If you as a running back got more than 400 touches in a season, that did not bode well for your future in the NFL. And I remember learning that the hard way with uh, Larry Johnson. Uh, the Falcons had the running back the year they went to the Super Bowl in 1998. I can't remember his name, but he had over 400 touches. I think his name was like Jamal Anderson. And uh, he was never the same after that. Granted, now granted, Christian McCaffrey and the Kyle Shanahan offense, for whatever he's able to give that team, should be really, really entertaining, really, really deadly. He should be able to do a lot for that Panthers I'm sorry, 49ers team, while he's upright. But is it going to be enough to justify giving up what draft capital you had left? Because remember, they don't have a first-round pick from the Trey Lance trade. So you've got two third-round picks, I think, and that's it. So I think the trade's a disaster from the 49ers' perspective. I think it's terrible. Um, This is not somebody who's going to help them be able to push the ball down the field either. Like, that's the issue right now. The 49ers are able to do a lot of stuff close to the line of scrimmage. They're able to do a lot of shorter passes to Debo and Kittle and Ayuk. Their their issue is they struggle to push the ball down the field. This is not going to help with that. The reason why you can't push the ball down the field is because Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have a big enough arm to do it consistently. That's not going to change because you got Christian McCaffrey. So I think it's a disaster, but bigger picture, to talk about this from a more... Seahawks fan type perspective. Um, I, I want to take a look at a chart here that uh, Jason over at Over the Cap posted earlier today. I'm pretty sure this is updated for after the uh, trade. He posted a kind of interesting chart here, and it really just highlights how, even though the Seahawks are not necessarily great this year, they found themselves in a very good position. And that contrasts with the other teams in this division. And you look at it, and it all just comes back to a couple of choices that this Seahawks team made. Um, So if you look at this chart, basically the uh, vertical axis is draft value in the upcoming draft. Which teams have the most value in the upcoming NFL draft in 2023? The Texans have the most by far because they have their own pick and the Cleveland Browns pick from the Watson trade. But we're number two. We have the second most draft value of any team in the league right now by a pretty healthy margin, a decent margin. So doing good there. And the horizontal axis is estimated cap space as of right now. And you can see that, again, there are teams that have a little bit more. The, the Bears have way more. The Bears cap is basically wide open. And you've got some teams like the Giants and the Patriots, Falcons, Bengals. They, they've got good cap space. But... We're in, like, the top eight. We're in the top eight in terms of uh, salary cap space in 2023. And unlike a team like the Bengals or the Ravens, maybe the Giants, too, we're not about to have to throw a big check at at a quarterback. We might throw a big check at a quarterback, but it's not going to be the market-breaking check if it is. And we might not even do that. So if you add it all up, the future prospects of this team, by which I mean the immediate future, like next year, are really good. And it's all because we hit multiple grand slams with that Wilson trade. And look, when we made the trade, I was okay with it. I didn't think it was going to be like this. I was okay with the trade, but wow. (laughs) With one trade, you have completely flipped the script because where would we be without that trade? Our draft value would be okay because we'd probably be terrible this year. We'd probably be getting a top pick just because we'd be a bad team with Wilson. But it wouldn't be that much higher than average. We'd probably be down here where my mouse is. And estimated salary cap space, um, who knows? We'd still be paying Wilson. We'd still have Wilson on the books next year. Now, He, if he's playing the way he's playing in Denver right now, he'd have no trade value. You probably wouldn't extend him, but would he throw a fit about having to play the last year of his deal? Most players don't want to ever do that. So what would you do then? Do you just dump him for nothing? Do you just trade him to some random team for like a third round pick just to be done with it? I don't know. So maybe you could free up some of that cap space too. But 
odds are good that if you kept Wilson, you probably would have spent a little more aggressively and you wouldn't have this much cap space. You wouldn't have top percent, top 25th percentile cap space, right? All because of that one decision that has become an absolute grand slam, one of the greatest decisions in NFL history. And I, I, when we made it, I believe that we could win that trade. I thought it could be a net positive trade for us, but I didn't think it was going to be like this at all. Like this is beyond my wildest imagination. And you take a look at the other teams in the division to kind of tie it back to the McCaffrey thing. The 49ers, I mean, look. I know they're a pretty good team this year, but they're three and three. They're this, they got the same record as us. They're not setting the world on fire right now, exactly. And you can see their future prospects. They have basically no draft capital. The only team with less right now is the Broncos. So the 49ers have practically tied for the least amount of draft capital, and they have below average cap space. And by the way, they have below average cap space without a big money making quarterback on that roster because Trey Lance is still on the rookie deal and Jimmy Garoppolo took the big pay cut. So they don't even have an expensive quarterback and they still have below average cap space. It's currently projected to be just barely positive. And granted, there are a lot of teams that are in the negative, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's still not a very enviable enviable position. And this all comes back to a handful of decisions that this uh, um, uh, 49ers team has made. The decision to trade a whole bunch of picks for Trey Lance, which is completely... I don't think entirely the fault of Trey Lance, of course, but it has been a complete disaster. And then I think you have compounded that disaster by trading for McCaffrey, a move that I think reeks of desperation. And you also have other decisions too, like the decision to move on from uh, Buckner and commit to Kinlaw, who's been a complete bust. Where, yeah, you probably you probably saved cap space, but you maybe wouldn't have to make these desperation trades. You've got a team like the Rams. Now, look, I can't say nothing about the Rams, really, because they won the Super Bowl last year. They achieved the ultimate goal. That's what you That's what you go all in for. Like, they already did it. I mean, the Rams, as a Seahawks fan, they have me in, my back, in, in their back pocket, basically. But if you look at it right now, it seems like maybe it was a one-year hit. Maybe. And you can see, they're not doing so great with cap space either. They're in the negatives. And they're... Draft value, well below average, probably bottom bottom eight, bottom six, I think, actually. And they're not that good this year. So at least in terms of the immediate present and the near future, they're a, so far a mediocre at best team for what? What, what? what good is it? What is it for? I know it's for winning the Super Bowl last year, so all this is worth it. Of course. Of course. I understand that. But... Just looking at the immediate future and the very narrow present that is right now, it's looking way better for us. We, we have the same record as the Rams, guys. We have the same record. And look at how much better our future is situated compared to theirs. And what, what why was that? Because they traded for Von Miller for half a year to try to seal up the Super Bowl, which worked. Because they traded for Stafford to try to make a short-term run at it, which worked. Okay, I'm, uh, again, uh, there are going to be Rams fans in my comment section throwing a fit because I said all that. Don't get me wrong. It worked. But right now, it's not. In the, in the immediate present, it's not. And you'd rather be in our shoes going forward than theirs. And the Cardinals, slightly above average draft value, mostly stemming from the fact that they don't look like they're going to be a very good team this year and slightly below average cap space, all stemming from the decision to pay Kyler Murray when they clearly weren't that excited to do so. They knew it was probably a bad idea to pay Kyler Murray all that money, but they did it. And it's really taken the lid off their flexibility in terms of spending money going forward. They've got aging players on that team like J.J. Watt and A.J. Green who are probably giving you their last good year, maybe last couple of good years here. And they, you would certainly not trade situations with them. They probably have a worse team than us. And look how bad their future looks compared to us. And again, it's just one or two bad decisions. If the Seahawks had decided to commit to Wilson long-term after last season, which I thought was a possibility at least, we'd probably be somewhere around this area. We'd probably be somewhere in the middle. Just not a lot of draft value. Not a lot of money to spend. 
and we'd probably be worse than the other three teams in this division. I mean, we're not necessarily better than them as is with a quarterback who's playing much better. So, kind of cool. It really does highlight how, even though we're not necessarily as good as some of the teams in this division right now, like, I don't think we're as good as the Niners. And being straight honest, we're probably not as good as the Rams, but it's close, right? It's close. And look how much better our future is. All right, guys. See y'all later. I'm going to be on Twitch tonight. Go Hawks.